All righty. Looks like we're uh, 2 o'clock Eastern on the dot. Um, awesome. we got a lot of people already joined right now. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a couple more kind of trickle in over the next minute or two. But Caroline, Kate, if it's okay with, with you all, I say we get started. Sound good? All right. Sounds good. Great. I'll start by sharing my screen. All right. So, you know, thanks everyone for joining today. You know, we're, we, uh, as most people know, if, if you've made your way here, you know, we're going to be talking about 3PLs and brands and, and automating um, the operations really on both sides from both the 3PL side. And if you're a 3PL today joining, um, you know, maybe you're on SKU Vault already using your uh, SKU Vault as your WMS and managing your 3PL business. If you're a brand, or even a retailer maybe, um, you know, and you're joining today, uh, maybe using SKU Vault for an internal warehouse, maybe using FlexPoint for your distributed order management system, whatever it might be, uh, really do appreciate you taking the time. This should be for just about everyone. So you can kind of see on both sides of the spectrum, um, you know, how we can really empower brands. Typically it's most, most, uh, most often a brand working with a 3PL, uh, but even if there's some resellers out there and retailers, uh, that might be working with 3PLs, you know, how you guys can automate your operations as well. So, um, yeah, with that, I'll, I'll go ahead and just jump right in. And, you know, today's about kind of giving a high-level overview of, of what we see in the industry, but also we're going to showcase, Kate on her side is going to showcase the Business Hub functionality, which is some really exciting new functionality from SKU Vault. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, how FlexPoint kind of interacts with, with SKU Vault and allows kind of this more powerful uh, order routing and inventory management system. Uh, when combine the two. Cool. Like I said, uh, my name is Travis. Um, I'm the CEO of FlexPoint, and we also have Kate here as a senior sales engineer on the SKU Vault side. I want to start with, you know, really what we've seen, and some people, you know, might have seen this uh, recently, and I posted just on LinkedIn, but, you know, there really has been a rise in 3PLs. If you're a 3PL uh, here, you know, you might have just started in the last two, three, four years because we've seen such an increase in direct-to-consumer brands, um, you know, e-commerce in general, but really this need to outsource software. So I'm sorry, outsource the, the logistics um, and the software that follows it. And so, you know, with this rise, we've seen more 3PLs show up, more brands show up. And, you know, as a 3PL, you're seeing more and more different kinds of brands. And we'll talk about the different fulfillment methods that they might look to employ, but in general, uh, you know, the, the space is not mature yet. There is uh, companies like ourselves and Skewball looking to tackle and solve these, these challenges. There's some archaic, you know, really kind of old school kind of uh, players in the space that a lot of 3PLs gravitated towards originally. But, um, you know, the, the new SaaS kind of software model for 3PLs is, is really kind of just getting going, if you ask me, because the market size has just has blown up in the last couple of years. And, uh, and on top of that, a lot more e-commerce enabled 3PLs, where traditionally we've seen 3PLs, you know, take in the B2B um, side of things, right? The receiving in and, and the selling uh, and pickpacking and shipping of freight items and, and larger pallets where B2C um, and, and direct to consumer as well, you know, that's, that's really kind of, um, you know, kind of taken off in the 3PL market. So uh, it's really exciting time. You can see here in this, this chart here that we put together, you know, just really how much it's taken off. Well, oh, there we go. I got some animation. <laughs> uh, so, how do you scale, uh, right? The, the reason that we talk about how it, how it's grown so much, and you know, if you're a three PL listing, you're like, "Wow, I can't believe the last two years have been insane." My business, one, I've converted to an e-commerce enabled three PL, or I've doubled or tripled my the amount of orders that I get in per day, per week, per month, whatever it might be. As most of you know, how do you scale that? You you need to automate in some cases. You can't just throw bodies at it. That might work for a little bit, but um, scaling really does mean automation. It really means streamlining your processes and getting the right systems in place so that you're not just doing a lot of repetitive uh, work over and over again. So when it comes to what you need to automate and what the expectation is, you're a 3PL uh, or you're a brand on both sides of the relationship, what are you expecting? One, you're expecting easy onboarding, right? You need to... Um, get on and get up, get up, get your physical items within the 3PL in a fairly uh, seamless way. Um, you need to integrate your store. Um, you need to do all this kind of stuff in the first, you know, 30, 60, 90 days, whatever it might be. Um, 
but you, you're really expecting it to, to be somewhat seamless. You're not, you're not looking to make another project. You're looking to automate things. You're looking to outsource things. Um, there's number two, number three, number four really are inventory, visibility, automated order processing, simple billing reporting. Really, I, I wanted to hear Kate and maybe kind of just pause uh, and let you kind of speak to what you see. I know you guys have uh, a good amount of 3PLs on the SKU vault side of things. Um, when it comes to these four pieces of it, what have you been hearing from 3PLs and even on the brand side, what they get requested from their customers? You know, where, where's kind of the pain points here and when you're starting a relationship with a 3PL? Sure. Thank you, Travis. Um, usually what I'm encountering is two big categories of pain points. I think one of them is being able to have visibility and then being able to share um, knowledge about where your inventory is to multiple places. Uh, part of that is sharing visibility um, and sharing inventory values with your clients, but also depending on your service level agreement, you might be responsible for sharing inventory to their marketplace. Um, so then you guys are kind of on the line and making sure that there's integrity in that inventory. Um, and that's kind of Ski Vault's bread and butter. That's what we're really good at. Uh, what we are also seeing is day-to-day um, -day operations for how do we bill our customers. Um, everybody's billing is slightly different, uh, but most of the time what we see is billing for transactions and for storage um, and being able to get a, a handle on proven data to prove what work you've done, uh, when the work happened and how you had it accomplished is something that is uh, an ongoing problem for 3PLs because it takes up so much time. Um, so with SKU Vault, we're able to give you really dedicated reports to show what work has been happening for the clients. And that helps you bill faster, which helps get cash in hand faster and can free up some time for you to focus on growing your business. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's super helpful. And, and that's definitely what we, we see as well on our side. Awesome. So... <laughs> You know, if you ever attended a FlexPoint webinar or demo, you know, we like our diagrams. We like to, to show workflows. Um, we really think, you know, everything we do is, is workflow oriented. And, and that's really why you join uh, a program like ours or, or buy our kind of software is, is to automate these workflows. So what Kate just mentioned, you know, there's a lot, there's enough complexity just in, in that, just in the onboarding and the syncing and the order, you know, uh, visibility and, and inventory visibility just in the, the single source kind of what we call the 3P only fulfillment brands, right? So a brand, I sell, you know, watches, I've got my own brand of watches and I just want to outsource the, uh, the fulfillment. I don't want to start a warehouse. I want to go live in the Philippines or Thailand and live the, you know, the e-commerce lifestyle. Uh, and so I just, I work with, you know, one 3PL and they're on SKU vault so I can easily connect in and uh, Kate's going to show how that's easily done. Um, and then that's, you know, that's easy enough, right? I have all the orders that come from my Amazon store or my Shopify store, they're automatically sent to 3PL, the 3PL via the SKU vault connector. Uh, the inventory synced, obviously, so I don't have a, a lot of stock outs and I'm showing the accurate quantities of my store. That's simple enough. You know, tracking's pulled back. Um, you can see, you know, the 3PL, 3PL is on SKU vault. You're on your own, you know, Shopify store and Amazon store. Not a lot of software, not a lot of needs, not a lot of complexity there. That's great. No, no flex point, as you can see. We, we don't really add a lot of value here, admittedly, and, and you know, that's not where we sit. Um, however, when we get into what we call hybrid fulfillment brands, that's really where FlexPoint comes in. And it, it allows 3PLs to work with brands that have hybrid fulfillment. So you haven't, have not heard the term before, hybrid fulfillment really means what it sounds like. I fulfill in uh, at least two different ways, right? And maybe three, maybe four, whatever it might be. But I fulfill for my 3PL, like we saw earlier, uh, which is on SKU Vault, right? But I also have my own internal warehouse. You know, I, I just set up, I'm not the, you know, e-commerce lifestyle guy. I just, I have a, a large brand and I have a large e-commerce business and I, I have an existing warehouse, but I, you know, I want to leverage a 3PL because I want to test it out and see how it might work for me. I, I might have it because I only have an East Coast warehouse and I want a West Coast warehouse or maybe a different country, whatever it might, might be there. Um, I might be getting a 3PL just for a, a different type of product that I don't want to carry. Like it's a lot larger or whatever it might be. I don't want to have to warehouse it. Maybe there's some, you know, cooling or refrigeration needed. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to keep your internal warehouse and also work with a third party warehouse. Um, and then obviously the drop shipping, that's still a big piece, right? We see brands uh, you might think like, why would a brand drop ship? How does that factor in? I mean, there's a lot of brands that are starting to drop ship other goods to, to leverage other brands to bring in traffic to their website. Um, we see companies, we know this, there's like a photography uh, kind of in like electronics company that 
uh, we work with that sells a lot of their own branded iPhone cases and, and photography bags and uh, a lot of kind of like photography, you know, modern electronics kind of products, but then they also partner with the large electronics companies to provide, you know, drones on their websites and, uh, you know, high end like Canon and Sony kind of camera equipment. So um, a lot of reasons why you might be a hybrid fulfillment brand and just sending and connecting into your single 3PL on SKU Vault might not make sense. And that's really where FlexPoint comes in, right? Um, you know, whether it's just coming from your B2C channels or even if you've got B2B resellers, the orders can come in through FlexPoint route to three route to SKU Vault, uh, only send the orders that make sense to your 3PL that's on SKU Vault, right? Not overwhelming them with uh, items that might not be something that's in their warehouse, right? And causing that complexity, like we talked about in those four bullets earlier about, you know, making it easy for them to, to fulfill, not harder. Um, you know, sending fulfillment requests, also dynamically generating purchase orders, if it's in the case of a, a dropship supplier. Um, that's really where we sit. Uh, and kind of how we fit in the equation and just want to kind of, you know, paint that picture with our, our infamous diagrams uh, here on this, on this webinar. Cool. So that's, that's what we're talking about today. That's what we're going to be demoing. Um, so I want to give you that background. You know, that's FlexPoint plus Skewball. That's where we fit in the equation and where Skewball fits. And uh, from there, we'll, I'll kick it over to, um, we'll come back to this one really. We kind of already touched on it, but you know, I'll kick it over to Kate here on the, the SKU Vault kind of demo of the Business Hub functionality. Awesome, thank you, Travis. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, guys. What we're first gonna look at is what the view in SKU Vault looks like. Uh, we're gonna kind of talk through how to establish the data sharing rules, and then we'll wrap it up looking at the portal, which is what um, you would be sharing that invitation out for. So I'm gonna go ahead and share this screen. So what SKU Vault has done, we've built secure data sharing. Um, it's a network so that you can invite people in to see your inventory. Um, you, if you are connected in a hybrid model like what Travis is talking about and where kind of we can really partner with FlexPoint to be dynamic for you, um, you can actually have paid instances of SKU Vault or two SKU Vault accounts connected sharing inventory as well. Uh, because really the name of the game here is visibility for your whole supply chain, that whole network um, that needs to be interconnected. That's what we're doing here. Uh, we can also just invite our clients in to see our inventory uh, based on a couple of rules, which is what we're looking at right here. Um, this is Business Hub where we can see the connections that I have established and the direction that the data is flowing. So you can have people sharing their inventory with you to be able to have visibility on it and then also share that inventory out with certain people. Uh, to add somebody in or to invite them in, you would go into your Ski Vault account and go into add this connection. Uh, the company information is, you know, who are we going to be talking to? This is the point of contact that um, you need to be sharing with. I'm just going to type some stuff in here. When you are inviting somebody in, you're actually using um, a rules engine that we've built to, to, stat, to establish what information needs to be shared with who. Um, we've actually also designed this so if you wanted, you could just share catalog data with somebody saying, these are the SKUs that we're managing for you. And you can also choose to share inventory values. Um, so you can choose to share just one or both of those. So let's say we wanna share both, I'm gonna say, um, establish a rule name so that I can identify and edit it later if I need. And then from there, this is where we're using some attributes that you can use in SKU Vault to determine how we're going to share information. Uh, one of the biggest ones that we've invested in for uh, 3PLs is the client identifier. Um, as a 3PL, you guys know when you are doing work, like I talked about earlier, you want to be paid for it, right? You're not going to do labor if you're not going to be able to bill for that. Um, in SKU Vault, you can associate client ID with a particular SKU or catalog of SKUs for your client. And then every time you interact with that SKU with the system, we're cataloging those interactions in an event stream that you can then bill for later. That's also used though to share inventory like we're seeing here. So here it's if then, if client contains, here's one of my clients, then I can choose to share inventory. I can continue to add conditions as needed. So if brand contains, let's say I just wanna share Adidas with them, I have that ability to really be precise about what I wanna share. So if these uh, parameters are satisfied, then I can share inventory. 
Um, the way SKU Vault works, if you guys are familiar with our software, you have, um, we have IMS and WMS, Inventory Management and Warehouse. Uh, FlexPoint really comes in with that order routing piece to give you a full business picture. So what we're seeing here is the ability to share IMS data, you know, the inventory that we're managing, and then WMS data, which is more of where exactly that inventory is. So here, this if then statement is if my warehouse contains, these are the list of my warehouses, I pick the warehouses I want to share, then I can choose to share on hand inventory, incoming inventory, and available inventory. Um, and just to briefly explain that, incoming is the inventory that's inbound to you, on hand is the inventory that's physically in your possession, and available inventory is the inventory that's um, still available for sale. So if you guys are familiar with SKU Vault, generally the rule of thumb is in orders come in and we send inventory back out, um, accounting for those items that are on sale. So we call that pending inventory. On hand is physically what I have, pending is what's sold, and then available is on hand minus pending, uh, just to briefly explain what that is. So from here, I would send that invite out. My client would get an email letting them know that they've been invited into their inventory. Once they follow that, I'm gonna stop my screen share and show you the portal. Once they click on that link and they accept the invite, they would be able to view this portal of inventory. Uh, the page that they actually land on is the network page. Uh, this data sharing rules, this is if this page is if they wanted to upgrade to be able to share inventory out to another place, they would get SKU Vault. But where they would land when they first accept the invite is this network page, <clears throat> which looks pretty similar to the page we were just on. Uh, you would see your invite here. They would click accept. And from there, it would be an active connection for them. And here you can see that I'm, send, I'm providing this portal with my inventory. From this page, they'd also be able to view their inventory and catalog that you're managing. They'd be able to export that information out. Uh, what they'd be able to export is the SKU data, so SKU, barcode, title, that information, as well as those inventory values that we talked about. Also, if for some reason they needed to, they could disconnect that connection. What we're also able to do is offer them a chance to provide a profile where they can uh, describe what their business is. That's really useful for us in knowing what to build next and how to better service them. Um, as 3PLs, you guys understand that industries have very specific needs um, and us and FlexPoint are catering to those various needs uh, to make sure that nobody gets left behind. So next we're gonna go into our catalog so that you can see what they would be able to view. Uh, this is very similar to the SKU Vault catalog that you guys are probably familiar with if you're SKU Vault clients. Uh, this is kind of our single source of truth, or I also like to think of it as a global inventory view, because we're able to see all the types of inventory that you need to keep track of. So what they're seeing here is SKU data, all of the different ways that we can categorize and classify it, as well as our inventory values. So here, um, I don't have any inventory incoming for these SKUs, but I do have inventory on hand, and I have my available inventory here as well. This is view only at the moment, so they're not able to uh, do much more than just view the inventory, right? We're providing a, a window into the warehouse so they can, you know, stop calling you guys at midnight wondering what inventory you have on hand. Um, they can come here, look at what inventory they have, um, and decide what needs to be sent to you, which can help make them help them make better business decisions about where to invest money and where to send stuff. Um, under the admin piece, they're able to import their own catalog if they wanted to view that. Um, so they could see that uh, product information in the catalog themselves. Uh, from here, they can also reach out to our support team. Because um, as you guys know, um, if, as a business starts outsourcing labor, part of that outsourcing is outsourcing software, right? Like you're not just buying warehouse space, you're buying a team of people to do work for you. Part of that's gonna be software. Um, so I just like to mention, they're not on an island by themselves here. We're still available to help support things as needed. Um, and uh, you know, maybe eventually they'd wanna get a Steve Vault account too, and then they'd be able to share even more information back and forth. Uh, but Travis, I'm gonna go ahead and kick it back to you. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Kate. That's, I mean, I always love to see, uh, 
you know, your guys' accounts or your specific accounts, it makes a lot of sense uh, when you show kind of that demo there. So I appreciate that. And Caroline, I'm going to go ahead and just talk a couple minutes here um, on this question and just share one more slide and then we'll kick it over to you for your demo of FlexPoint. All right, I will share my screen. Kate, I might need your help on answering this question. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, you can probably see the question currently. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was okay. wondering, I was gonna kind of, <laughs> kind of wait for that one, but I'll go ahead and answer it now. Um, so okay. uh, if that's okay, um, onboarding SKU Vault, generally we say it takes about four weeks, four to six weeks. Um, SKU Vault's incredibly data-driven. So when I say four to six weeks, you can break that into three main categories. Um, good data in means good data out. Uh, Skewbelt's got a lot of reporting. Part of it is this portal, right, that we just talked about. How do I make sure that my data is clean enough so that I can share it with confidence? Um, so we've got data analysts, we've got a data team that can help you with that, but that's the first step of getting set up in Skewbelt, the database. Um, getting your catalog established, creating virtual warehouses, all of that information. Uh, the next phase would be what we call the usage phase or what I call the usage phase. And that's where we're designing your day-to-day -day workflows and pressure testing the system we just built to make sure that it's bulletproof. Because uh, honestly, if you guys work in tech, you understand that technology breaks and coming back from that break is what kind of sets you up for success. Uh, so that's what you're doing with your onboarding coach here at SKU Vault. Um, and then from there, you go live and that's the last step of the process. Um, again, like I say, four to six weeks is pretty average for us. Um, keep in mind, if you had data that was really messy, might take a little bit longer than that. Um, or if you guys are really ready to go, I've seen people get up and running in a week and a half. So it, uh, I'd say a month is pretty fair. Gotcha, awesome. And, and yeah, there was there was one here, uh, another one specifically that I was, I was keen to kind of answer before moving on to ours. Um, you know, uh, this one it says, would you say that SKU Vault and Amazon FBA should be fine with just SKU Vault, we are having a tough time getting those two channels to work with Shopify. So I'm not sure. So I guess my my thought would be, you know, you've got some inventory, right? And uh, let's go here real quick, right? So you've got some inventory in SKU Vault and a 3PL. Maybe it's your internal warehouse. Maybe it's a 3PL you're working with. Um, and then you also have what I would consider FBA is like an other 3PL um, to some extent. I feel like that's a good case where FlexPoint may, might make sense, but Kate, uh, do you know, do you guys handle FBA routing between SKU Vault and FBA today, or do you guys solve for that today without FlexPoint? Yeah, we can. Um, I would say um, if you're just running with Shopify and Amazon as an FBA, uh, you could probably make that work. Where we really want to rely on FlexPoint is if we need to make decisions about where orders need to be fulfilled. Um, so if it's a use case where it's if if I don't have the inventory in my house in my warehouse, then I need to kick it to FBA. We probably want to rely on FlexPoint to help us with that decision. If, however, you have very strict uh, these orders are going to be merchant fulfilled and these other orders are FBA fulfilled, then we could help solve for that. That's great. I appreciate that clarification. That's really where I mean, if you have overlap, is the way that we describe it. Does do you have the exact same product in two different locations and need to make a decision right. on where to route it? Right. Exactly. And then it runs out. So, yeah, if it's too distinct, appreciate that clarification, Kate. It sounds like Skew Vault can handle that. If you feel like at any point you're going to keep that exact same inventory in both FBA or your own warehouse, that's where FlexPoint, that's really, you know, why we exist. Yeah. All right. Cool. I will stop sharing and I'll kick it over to Caroline. Okay, perfect segue. Um, everyone, I am our, our partner's manager and, and just gonna go into the app a little bit to, to really walk through that use case that was asked. So um, basically this is this is our app here. You can set up, uh, easily integrate with SKU Vault and set up those integrations um, as well as any dropship suppliers. Like Travis gave the example earlier, we do have a brand that we're working with that has all of the photography and technology accessories, but they also wanna sell those high price items on their site, like a drone or a um, Sony camera, uh, they might have this set up where they have a dropship supplier as well as their SKU Vault warehouse or SKU Vault 3PL. Um, and then for, for those use cases where you do have SKU overlap, like Travis um, 
had mentioned through that question, FlexPoint can, can show you that. And I set up filters here to say, you know, these can be based off virtually any use case you can think of, but maybe we need to look at which SKUs we do have overlap between. So the number of inventory links is greater than one is what I set up here. Um, and now you can look into any of these products to be able to see that information. So um, we have FlexPoint set up at the source inventory level, product catalog level, and then channel listing level. So all those diagrams showed you can have it on a Shopify store, or any other, the marketplaces that we're integrated with, or of course, any other custom sales channels. Um, and then, and then really the, the power of the order routing, being able to make the strategic decisions is going to come into play between that SKU overlap. Um, looking at one of these products as well, anything um, that you want to be able to import, whether that be from your 3PL, uh, if it's estimated fees or shipping costs, uh, you can take those into consideration to help strategically price all of your items on your online store or marketplace. Um, as well as strategically be able to account for that when sending to dropship suppliers. And then looking into the order piece here, so you do have abilities to, to filter and manage all of your orders. And this, when you open up one of these, you'll be able to see the line items that are included. And then the purchase orders or fulfillment requests that we've sent to over to the 3PL, uh, your internal warehouse or dropship supplier. And in some instances, um, if those need to be split up because of the strategic routing orders that you set, like Kate was mentioning, you maybe send this one uh, fulfillment order to your warehouse and then one to FBA. We can do that per each order that comes in. And just to show you an example of some of these rules. So in our order routing settings here, you can basically set up priorities based on all of these listed. So lowest cost um, takes into consideration the estimated fees that you can set. Uh, single source is just preferring that it comes from one location, which is usually uh, going to make shipping more affordable and the order just much smoother. And then preferred sources, you can enable which sources you prefer. So if it is um, a specific use case, for instance, you can set up rules for any of these order routing setting. So if the country code is a certain code or if the brand is a certain um, brand, we're always gonna try to fulfill from our 3PL first. Any of these data points can set up those rulings. And then you can enable which sources you prefer. Um, we also have closest and margin functionality to be able to take that into consideration, especially if you're working with different 3PLs and different um, warehouses that you have across the country for, for speed for shipping. But basically that order routing allows you to be strategic and take advantage of that SKU overlap as we call it um, in an automated fashion. And that's pretty much the condensed, um, condensed demo there. Do we have any, any questions? Or anything Travis that, that you'd wanna to touch on? No, I think that's, that's right. Um, you know, in general, I think the big thing there is is looking at the order routing, right? I mean, a lot of times it's it's very simple setup in that, hey, prefer the lowest cost. And I think you, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but, you know, one thing that we do uh, a little bit better than what I've seen in other organic systems is like, you're going to look at the lowest cost, you're then going to look at how close is it? Is it within a percent margin you can set? If it's only a difference in a dollar or whatever it might be, then you can move on to the closest, right? Because, you know, you're not only trying to drive efficiency and optimize for, for profitability and things like that. But if it's like a dollar or 50 cents different, if you route it to this warehouse and the other warehouse, just go go to the closest, right? Um, and, and make sure that gets there as quick as possible. Uh, so there's a lot of different factors you can you can tweak there to make sure that you're uh, optimizing for both costs, but also customer happiness. Um, a lot of times closest is going to be uh, the cheapest anyways, but you know we've got all that in there. Single source is really just making sure no matter what, you know that you might have some interesting kind of use cases, but we're always going to prefer that and then move on to the next one and then check for closest, check for least. So it's not like a pick which one here. It's, you know, look at all of these and optimize. You're basically building an algorithm here uh, to make sure you're, you're shipping the best way possible and it's checking across multiple things. So, uh, yeah, uh, I just want to touch on that. But, yeah, in general, 
when it comes down to a high volume of orders and you have a, several different decisions, that's really what the order routing here is for. Um, cool. So I think from my side, I think we might be ready for questions. Let me just check. Um, yeah, let me let me go ahead and share real quick, Caroline. I'll, I'll do just a quick wrap up on our side. And then if you want to like look in the questions queue and see if there's anything, uh, I'll just kind of wrap up with this last slide here. Um, so yeah, I touched on the slide a little bit here first, but just to kind of bring it home, you know, your client, if you're the 3PL, you're, you're going to be using SKU Vault and you may already be using SKU Vault as, you, as your WMS and IMS and managing all of your 3PL business and other, other business as well when it comes to your physical inventory. Kate showed the SKU Vault client portal, like the business hub side of things. This is where your client can really come in, look at real-time uh, stock levels, get, get their billing reports, things like that, get the billing reports emailed, um, you know, and kind of really kind of interface with, uh, and, and as, Kat, as Kate mentioned, not really kind of be emailing you in the middle of the night, calling you in the middle of the day, things like that. So uh, that's kind of that main use case. And that same client, just to be clear, they would be the one using uh, FlexPoint. Um, and then when they're using FlexPoint, they're using that to, you know, publish their brand's uh, products up to their Shopify store, sync with their Amazon store, Magento, big commerce, where it might be, um, sync the inventory across multiple different fulfillment sources, and then also routing the orders when they get in, as, as Caroline showed, uh, to either generate the fulfillment request into your internal warehouse or uh, route to dropship suppliers with a purchase order. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where things sit, but uh, I know we had a couple of questions coming in already, and I think we had some, some more here as well. Yeah, so I can kind of walk through and direct these questions to, to you and Kate. Um, so first question, how would I connect my 3PL that isn't on SKU Vault? Travis, do you want to take that one? Yeah, exactly. So, so the benefit of the SKU Vault and FlexPoint relationship is that, you know, we have this, this direct API integration. Um, you know, we fully evaluated and reevaluated the API as, it, as things come up or change. And we, we pull in all the data. We pull in cost data and things like that. Um, from SKU Vault, so you can use it on that rule rule set that I showed earlier, Caroline showed. Uh, when, it doesn't stop us from also integrating with a, a 3PL that's not on SKU Vault. Uh, if they have an FTP transaction process, we can set that up. I mean, it's really, we have a self-service portal that allows you to do that. Um, our team can help set that up as well. No extra charge, really, when it comes to like just doing an FTP connection. Uh, there's API integrations, right? We can integrate to their API. They can integrate to our API. It really just comes down to who, who wants to build. So that's obviously uh, easy to do. Um, and we've got a full team that can kind of help there. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, it just depends. Are they on another platform that we integrate in? Maybe they have a Shopify connector. We've even done that with a couple of 3PLs, which is kind of interesting. They're, the 3PLs on a archaic WMS uh, that doesn't have an API and you know whatever it might be, they're like, well, we push everything to Shopify anyways. So why don't you just pull from there? We have, we've got a pre-built integration into Shopify to pull inventory out. So, I mean, that's really, as you can see in this diagram, that's really all we do is look to connect with your supply chain and integrate to your sales channels. So integration is uh, definitely core to what we do. We can help really in any possible way. Thanks, Travis. And I think you touched on this in that answer, but can FlexPoint allow me to send the cost to my customers? Um, if you just want to... Yep. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, that's a good point. You're right. I did talk about I can, we can pull them from SKU Vault. Uh, if you're the 3PL, right? So it sounds like this person's a 3PL. Um, you know, you might have a uh, every uh, pick pack fee, right? Uh, for like certain types of items, if it's certain size or whatever, you might have a fee associated. It might just be a blanket fee. We can pull that in and we can send that up to uh, to the brands as well, and they can those brands can leverage that in the rules that um, Caroline was show, showing earlier. So. Uh, definitely can pull in more of that metadata, which is which is nice when you have the SKU Vault, the FlexPoint connection. Thank you. Um, and this one for Kate, where does SKU Vault come in the touring process? Yeah, thanks. So um, I, I did see that question. I was a little confused by it. So um, I don't know if we can get any clarification, but touring process, um, I think maybe I have a disconnect about what you're looking for. Um, if you're looking for a demo, a full demo of Ski Vault, we'd love to do that with you. Um, you can reach out to us and we can get in touch and schedule one of those. Um, if you want a full tour of the process or the software, if that's what you're looking for. Um, 
I apologize if I didn't answer your question, but if you can uh, let us know in the chat if there if that helped or if you need something else, I'd be happy to answer that. Thanks, Kate. Yeah, feel free to send in a, a follow up question to that one. And uh, another SKU Vault question, um, I guess it's both, so we'll see. In SKU Vault, where would FlexPoint be connected through the channel accounts? Can we have multiple FlexPoint connections, one per client? I could take the SKU Vault side if that's okay. Um, and then I'll kick it over to you, Travis. So it's actually going to be set up on the FlexPoint side of things. Um, FlexPoint built to us. So you're not going to go to your channel accounts page to establish that connection. You would work through FlexPoint to set that up. Okay. Yep. That's, that's definitely a good point. And so uh, really when you set the sources, the first piece that Caroline showed with all the sources there, you uh, you would go and actually select the connection. Um, and then you, you select SKU Vault as a connection type and, that, and you choose either to pull inventory, uh, send orders, pull tracking. In this case, you most likely select all three. So um, yeah, I would assume that would be the case uh, for at least if you're just doing one. Um, if you are multiple clients, I would imagine that I think there's a warehouse key. Um, we could definitely follow up on this, but I, I do believe that there's probably a multiple client scenario. I don't know, Kate, okay, do you have any maybe insight into how we might configure that. I think that we pick specific warehouses, but I don't know if we could pick specific channels or, or something along those lines. Yeah, um, I don't know that the client ID is a shared value between your routing rules and the attributes we put on our SKUs here, but I think we'd be able to create a virtual warehouse for the client and then set that as a routing rule. I think that'd probably be the easiest way to establish it. Yeah, certainly. And so, yeah, I think, uh, I, I do know we will support this if we don't today. I mean, that's the whole the whole point, right? You're gonna have more than one client on FlexPoint, hopefully, right? And so, um, yeah, there's no doubt. And, and Simon, if you want, we're happy to kind of uh, jump on with a sales engineer on our side, maybe loop and skew ball as well, and talk through that. I, it, it should be possible today. And if it's not, we can easily make that configuration change. So uh, happy to answer that if we wanted to follow up from here, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you know, Caroline, we can we can always you know share emails and things at the end. Um, cool. And then I looks like this last one's over for Skew Vault. Yes, last question for Kate. Um, can Skew Vault create parent child parent children relationships for products? Yeah, thank you. So Nick, um, I need a little bit more information about what you need for parent and children. So if we're talking about the way data gets set up, like in um, big commerce, you can have a parent SKU that houses all the SKU information, like the title and the price and all of that. And then the children is just for your variance for your size run. Um, it's not quite like that in SKU Vault, uh, but if we're talking about, um, well, hold on, before I move on, it's not quite like that in SKU Vault because each unit, each widget needs to have its own SKU. So you're not going to have a parent SKU and then related children underneath it. Those children would need their own SKUs as well. If, however, you're talking about like a kit relationship where you have one identifying SKU that says this item will contain X number of SKUs, then yes, we can help support that. Yeah, just to, to piggyback on that real quick, um, you know, I know as Kate or yeah, as Kate mentioned earlier, SKU Vault truly an IMS, WMS. If it comes to a uh, actually maintaining like a product catalog, that's really where we can excel and, and augment uh, that relationship. So if it comes to like adding like a variation structure, you know, a parent t-shirt that is a, a t-shirt, it's, um, you know, Dwight from the office t-shirt. We, we like Dwight, as you can see from the, <laughs> from the presentation, uh, but it's in yellow and green and red, and it's also large, medium, small, whatever. You know, we kind of maintain that with all the images specific to the variant and the images that show on the parent. So if, if you're referring to like more of a, a catalog type structure and maintenance of a catalog, we do act as like a PIM to some extent, uh, even a product listing tool, uh, listing up to storefronts like um, Magento, BigCommerce, Shopify, creating the products up with the images custom fields, attributes, variations, all of that. So hopefully that's helpful. And then um, following up on, on the previous question, it was a typo, the touring process. Um, he meant routing process. So um, where does SKU Vault come in in the routing process? I can touch real quick on that, maybe pass it to Kate if I don't explain it correctly. It, it sounds like it really, it does, you know, we kind of sit upstream, maybe to kind of go back to, to this one. Uh, we do set up a stream that we, we should see in most cases, if you feel FlexPoint uh, is necessary and, and that's, you know, we talked about it's probably necessary if you have multiple different 
fulfillment uh, options, one being a warehouse, one your internal warehouse, your 3PL, uh, and then drop shippers. If that's the case, we're typically upstream here in the middle and we're splitting off orders that you know only the only SKU vault should receive. Uh, if it's your internal warehouse, it's only the things that you have stocked. If it's a 3PL, it's the only things they have stocked, whatever it might be. Um, you know, but it sounds like even if uh, for some reason, you know, you don't have complex needs and it's just simply you have two different lots of, of inventory that always are in your FBA or always in your warehouse and you don't need kind of decisions to be made. Um, I think SKU Vault kind of does split and route from what Kate was saying earlier. Yep, that's exactly right. Um, FlexPoint is the brain that taps SKU Vault to do the work. It's kind of the way you can think about it. That's where we have fallen there. Perfect. And another question um, for Travis, uh, do you work closely with inventory source? Yeah, we certainly do. Uh, when it comes to dropship suppliers, we're connected directly into inventory source um, and we will pull, you know, any inventory source uh, supplier, right? One in the, in the inventory source directory. We have a pre-built integration the same way we have a pre-built integration with SKU Vault or, you know, the Shopify connection I talked about earlier. We have a pre-built integration with inventory source so we can pull in any inventory source data, route orders, send tracking, all that kind of stuff uh, with them as well. Thank you. I think those are all the questions that have been submitted. Um, so I think that's everything for today. Awesome. Perfect. Appreciate it, Caroline, for putting this together. Kate, thanks so much for your insight and the demo of Business Hub. Um, I know we'll be sending this recording out uh, and posting on our YouTube, all that. Yep, replay available will be. I think everyone here will be getting a, a replay, a recorded version. Um, if you're not already, subscribe to us on YouTube. Just find FlexPoint on YouTube and subscribe there. I'm, I'm sure Skew Vault may have a channel as well, uh, and, and they'll be posted there as well. So um, that's, that's it for me.